Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a fantasy comedy drama film, Heart and Souls. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. In San Francisco, 1959, a pregnant mother is going to deliver her baby soon, so her husband sends her to the hospital by car. At the same time, four different strangers are living their ordinary lives in San Francisco. Here is a single mom singing a song to her children before leaving for work. At the theater, a would-be opera singer fails his audition because of nervousness and again ruins his job offer. The third person is a waitress who works in a bar, but pierces her boyfriend's heart right then as she hesitates and finally rejects his wedding proposal. She wants to change her mind only to find her heartbroken boyfriend has left the bar. Lastly, a burglar is paid to con a set of old and precious stamps, which a naive boy inherits from his grandfather. Condemned by his own conscience, he wants to steal the stamps back from the client and return them to the boy. Unfortunately, the client notices him, so he escapes the house as quickly as possible. Since he fails to retrieve the stamps, the boy calls him a bastard in disappointment. Frustrated, he stops a green trolleybus that passes by late at night. On the bus, he meets mom who is rushing to work, singer who backs out his audition, and waitress who wants to patch back with her boyfriend. At this time, the bus driver is distracted by an attractive girl in another car and accidentally drives the trolley bus off the overpass. Sometime later, the four passengers crawl out from the trolleybus, only to realize that they are already killed in the car accident. The pregnant mother and her husband are also nearby, pulling over on the roadside to avoid the collision. Surprisingly, their son Thomas is born in the car right at that time. Among those on board, driver has ascended to heaven, while the four passengers are called back halfway to attach to the newborn baby. For some unknown divine reasons, the four of them are tasked to accompany and look after the fat baby. The baby Thomas can see them and often talk to them, but no one else can. Therefore, his such behaviors look really strange in his parents' eyes. Years later, as he enters school, the way he chats with the four invisible ghosts often puts him under the spotlight. Soon, Thomas gets into trouble as he cheats money for horse betting, instigated by burglar. This case even brings the child protection officer to his parents. Thomas' father decides to send Thomas to a psychiatric center for rehabilitation so as to prevent Thomas from more pains and harms. The four friends decide to disappear from Thomas' life. Even with Thomas begging them to stay with him, they are determined to go. Traumatized by their departure, Thomas only manages to pull through it with years of psychological treatment. Years later, Thomas has grown into a heartless vice president of a renowned bank. He hates to make or maintain connections with any people around him. Even though he has a smooth sailing and career, his hormone relationship is in a total mess. He refuses to go any further with his longtime girlfriend, Anna. When Anna invites him to meet her parents, Thomas intends to reject her. Thomas' unreasonable reactions make the four ghosts worry. Just when they debate about what is right for Thomas' life, a green trolleybus passes through the wall and stops right before them. Actually, this trolleybus is to transport ghosts to their next life. To their surprise, driver alights from the bus to greet them. In fact, to redeem his own sins of carelessly ending four innocent lives, driver needs to repeat this task for 500 years. The four former passengers also learn that as they die accidentally, they should have the privilege of completing one unfinished business. Sadly, the angel in charge of such matters does not inform them, so they are kept waiting in vain. The quartet is angry about losing the precious opportunity, so that they continue to complain and grumble. Driver finally allows them to fulfill their last wish, before boarding the bus to next life. Everyone is thrilled for such a golden opportunity except Singer. At once, they return to Thomas and make all kinds of stunts to grab his attention. Their persistence finally earns the overreaction of Thomas. In shock, he loses control of his car and crashes it into the side of the road. When Thomas regains his consciousness, he quickly recognizes them as his old friends, but having been through countless sessions of psychotherapy, he cannot believe their existence is real. Coincidentally, they chance upon a schizophrenic patient who is a medium for spirits. Her testimony reaffirms Thomas that he's not hallucinating. Moreover, Thomas discovers that the four ghosts have never left him but seen him through the ups and downs all these years. He feels very irritated for having no personal space with the four of them around. Hence, he refuses to help them with their last wish. Soon, Thomas is discharged from hospital and returns to his piles of work, but the quartet does not let him go easily. Instead, they follow him wherever he goes and even disturbs him during his meeting. Waitress first enters Thomas' body to taste the joy of being alive. She dances around with Thomas' body, making him look totally female hormone charming. Thomas' colleagues can't bear to see him turning so weird. As Waitress takes her leave, Burglar immediately takes over. Under Burglar's control, Thomas begins to flirt with the deputy director of finance. 
Knowing his career will be doomed, Thomas starts to fight against the burglar and manages to drive burglar off his body. In exchange for his peace, Thomas gives in to the four of them and agrees to help them rectify their unfinished lives. Burglary cannot wait to retrieve the stamps for the boy. He brings the rest to the client's residence and glues his spirit to Thomas. While the client is taking a shower, Thomas swiftly grabs the stamps. However, when he's about to leave, a black hound suddenly darts out. In terror, all of them flee to the second floor. While Thomas manages to escape the aggressive hound, he's faced with the client who just walks out of the bathroom. But Burkler who lives within Thomas remains absolutely composed and even reprimands the client for robbing the stamps. Before the client realizes what's happening, Burglar breaks out from the window with the stamps. To his shock, previously, he could easily jump over to the adjacent building, but now, the building is demolished. He fumbles a little, but lands on the lawn safely. Due to his illegal parking, he's dealt with a traffic police, who finds Thomas to be in arrears for a high parking fee. Though Thomas wants Burglar to keep silent, Burglar hails insults and curses at the police, which gets Thomas arrested in the end. After settling the payment, Thomas is reminded of his date with Anna. Anna is agitated for Thomas' lateness at first, but soon, she accepts Thomas' sincere apologies. Following the date, Thomas visits the stamp's true owner and returns the $100,000 worth item to him. The boy, who is now a father, is overjoyed to see the stamp again. Everyone rejoices to see Burglar's wish come true. While they are celebrating, there comes the green trolleybus to fetch Burglar. Burglar wants to spend more time with his friends, but he's drawn into the bus by an unknown force. He bids farewell to Thomas and prepares for the next phase of his life. The second mission is to find mom's three children. Back then, when the single mom passes away, her three children are adopted by three different families, but the details for adoption are kept highly confidential. Clueless, they have no choice but to visit mom's previous house. Over there, mom discovers that her good friend just stays nearby. Thomas then visits the friend on her behalf and is told that mom's two daughters are adopted by the same family but her youngest son's location remains unclear. Considering that her daughters might have some ideas about where their brother is, they move to meet the daughters. However, a heavy traffic jam jeopardizes their plan. Due to such unforeseeable inconvenience, Mom volunteers to give priority to Singer's wish. Since the show tickets are sold out at the theater, Thomas sneaks in by seducing the security guard with the spirit of the charming waitress. However, no matter how prepared he is, Singer cannot overcome his stage fright to sing. In order to get rid of Singer's fear, Thomas asks all the audience to stand up and sing the national anthem together with Singer. Owing to the encouragement of Thomas and the audience, Singer makes his debut. His soothing heavenly voice calms down the audience. Moved by his beautiful singing, the jazz musician goes the extra mile to accompany him with guitar. Their wonderful performance creates great excitement among the audience. Right at this time, the green trolleybus stops on the stage, implying that it's time for Singer to go. Singer happily says goodbye to his ghost friends and extends his appreciation to Thomas before embarking on a brand new journey. Unfortunately, Thomas is arrested for disrupting the stage performance. At the police station, he again meets the same officer who claims payment from him. After Thomas is bailed out, he bumps into Anna outside the police station. Actually, Anna is among the theater audience to witness Thomas' performance. She's quite upset that Thomas has lied to her. The two have a fierce argument and Anna leaves in a fury. As time is pressing to resolve issues for mom and waitress, Thomas decides to appease Anna later. The sad thing is his car crashes with the policeman's car when he tries to back it. Adding to the tension, they see the green trolley coming in their direction. To give mom the luxury of time to see her beloved children, waitress is willing to go first. On the other hand, the policeman hugs his daughter and sings her the nursery rhymes. Mom is struck by his singing, for it's the very song mom composed for her youngest child. Urged by mom, Thomas calls the policeman by his name and informs him about his late mother. Despite much confusion, the policeman acknowledges that he calls the right name. To gain his trust, Thomas reveals the residential address of his two sisters. The policeman is unaware that his late mother is standing right beside him and feels so proud of her son. Seeing her son's career and family success, mom goes into Thomas' body to give her son a goodbye hug. Fulfilling her last wish, mom boards the green trolleybus in contentment. In order to resolve the misunderstanding of Waitress' boyfriend, Thomas writes a letter in imitation of Waitress' handwriting and plans to speak with him. But the green trolleybus appears again, warning them that time is short. To finish the task, Thomas races against time to the destination, but the trolleybus arrives at the farm ahead of them. Thomas persuades driver to spare them a little more time. Once permission is granted, Thomas hastens to approach the farm owner to inquire about Waitress' boyfriend. To their dismay, her boyfriend just died of an illness seven years ago. 
Watching Thomas arguing with driver, waitress is reminded that Thomas and his girlfriend are making the same mistake as she did. She then realizes her true mission should be helping Thomas earn his true love. Such a realization frees her from her guilt, and waitress sincerely asks Thomas to cherish Anna. Owing to her earnest prayers, God grants her a favor to hug Thomas physically. Thanks to waitress' friendly advice, Thomas decides to have a heart talk with Anna. He plucks up his courage to tell Anna why he rejects her. As Anna loves him, she forgives him from the bottom of her heart. The two finally live happily together and prepare to restore their harmony. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.